Stop it, Yami, you show off. Good morning from Yami Bay TV. Wishing you all well today. Sending loads of love to you as usual. I'm on a glorious run at the moment. I'm thinking this is the heaviest I've been since I've been out. Or do you not have seen better? Have you seen me better? I don't think I have. Long may it continue. And it will. The game is, and the standard is going to get higher and higher. Like this morning, we follow on from yesterday's live. And for the first time, I talk about Jack Wones, the alleged murderer of one of my besties, Patrick Tate. What I saw, what I felt. In Belmarsh, I was in there in the 90s. I went to the Old Bailey 2000, 2001, and also uh, at one stage in the 90s where I got off, right? During that time, they were going up for the Essex Free murders. So I didn't get to see a lot of him because that was a time in the 90s when I was getting moved around everywhere. It was very difficult at that time doing the B-Cat run for anybody to accept me at the gates. Remember, I've told you lot, some of you have followed my story. Remember, I got locked out of Parkhurst and Blunderstone. They kept trying to move me here, there and everywhere. But the prisons that I'd been to before, they weren't letting me in. So I saw him fleeting me in Belmarsh a couple of times on the corridor during that time. But I saw him again in Whitemore, Category A's, he was on Blue Spur there. I was on Green Spur here. Now, Jack Wilms wasn't everyone's cup of tea. I don't really think he wanted to be. It's fair to say that he had the T-boy job for a long period of time in Whitemore and never really spoke to a lot of inmates. Maybe not any at all. I often used to wonder, he used to nod to me. I used to look out the corner of my eye and nod to him. I wondered if he thought or knew that Patrick Tate was one of my favourite besties. It passed through my mind, but I used to watch him quite a bit. And we knew during that lifetime that Uncle Yami studied a lot of men and saw different men with the same characters, but different face many times over the years. And we knew uh, Uncle Yami was the master of human behaviour, got to big myself up there, and I could work out characters Pretty, pretty easy, right? Many people would tell you that as well. Now, during that time, I used to notice um, Jack's quite big. Obviously, he could look after himself and won't stand on nonsense. But along the journey, a couple of those cat A's I was with him, he used to get into some strange skirmishes with other inmates. And on this occasion in Whitemore, him and his other geezer, they must have gone into the shower room to have a straightener. So when the bell went, I saw him walking through with the screws and I saw the other geezer walking uh, not far behind him, but the, the geezer looked a bit more worse for wear. So it looked like Jack Wilms got the better on that occasion, right? So I often used to think, I used to look at him and his behaviour in prison mirrored a man uh, that was innocent. You know that I've seen that from a few men. You know by certain behaviours if they are or they ain't. You know what I mean? So... I always believed, I'm not saying too much on the subject, they definitely wasn't a shooter. But after all, I wasn't there. So I can't really comment. But after getting bits and bobs from here, there and everywhere, how can you know if you could be right and this bit's right and the other one said that to someone else and all that? You just work it out in your mind. Uh, you try to think of what bits of fact and what bits of fiction. But again, what final answer can you come to really if he wasn't there? Now, he went to Long Island after that. There was a skirmish with um, the brothers of Islam, right? I can't remember what the argument was over, but three or four of them must have rushed him. But Jack, again, put up a decent fight and was fighting back, all right? I think his clothes were torn or something like that, but the bell went. He, I think he was T-boy again. He was on Perry Red or Perry Blue at that time, right? But the story with the Italian mafia hitman, you lot been messaging me, is true. Yes, it is, right? Now, Jack, like I said, used to get into some of these skirmishes and this Italian mafia hitman, I'm going to get his name later and put it up in the title, right? But it's only small. But on three occasions in the space of about a week, if I remember rightly, Jack confronted him over other issues with the phone or something like that or with music, that kind of stuff, right? Um, those are the, the prison skirmishes that you can get into on a daily basis. Some men's temperament uh, are a bit different from others. Jack was one of those ones and looked like he didn't suffer fools gladly and got irritated quite quick. On the third occasion that he confronted the Italian mafia hitman, he walked up to him, had a few choice words, 
And the Italian hitman turned around and said to him, okay, I'm going on the phone now and I'm gonna get your whole family wiped out. Jack went purple. Start to go, oh no, 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 okay. No, 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 no. So on that day, he bottled it. What does it all mean? If it was me, I think I would have bottled it as well. But there's a good story to start the morning. Sending loads of love.